our message. <clears throat> Worship Restored is taken from Genesis chapter 4, 25 to 26, and chapter 5, verses 1 to 17. As we survey the <clears throat> history of man's beginning, we are brought to bear to see the tragedy that took place in the first family after sin entered into this world. When sin came, there came much wickedness, evil, and we see murder taking place in the first home. The two sons of Adam and Eve, one killed the other. Cain killed Eve. And as we, Cain killed Abel. And as we think what the Lord speaks to us here, when we see this tragedy, tragedy in this first family, we realize that grace does not run in the blood, but corruption does, as one writer of old reminded us. A sinner begets a sinner, but a saint does not necessarily beget a saint. Here in the first family, when tragedy struck, one son died. The other son was uh, ushered away from home, became a wanderer. Uh, Cain, the head of a group of men and women who apostatize, who go against God, was made a wanderer. And here we see how uh, God, by His mercy, would provide a way out to this family of Adam and Eve. For the husband they, and the wife, they must be very grieved. Great grief must have fallen upon their hearts as they reflect upon their own life, their own wickedness, how God did correct them, and how their backslidings, God did reprove them. Nevertheless, there are consequences to sin. And as we see here, how the sin of or the corruption of the human nature as a result of Adam and Eve's fall bear, bore bitter fruit in the lives of the descendants. Last week, we had the opportunity to see the life and the posterity of the godless, Cain and his family how uh, they went after worldly possessions right, that they would ultimately find an emptiness. And how also they went after uh, uh, well, a lifestyle where the husband uh, would not be faithful to have only one wife, but polygamy came into uh, men's to disrupt the family order and also pleasure. How uh, pleasure uh, became uh, so much of a part of man's life as we saw <clears throat> what uh, Paul reminds us uh, of this last days where he said in 2 Timothy 3 that men would be 
disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And not only that, but uh, they inherited uh, an evil nature, an evil nature whereby they would persecute the righteous and they would plunder evil proliferated on earth through the descendants of Cain. And you saw how they built the city, how they began to make a life for themselves as if they are going to live in this world uh, forever. But this is not so. The Lord wants us to wake up and help us to see the futility of building this life under the sun, as Solomon would put it, this life without God. You would notice that after Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit, that very day they became mortal. In other words, they would begin this slow process whereby they would end, their life would end in death as we would see in Genesis chapter 5. And <clears throat> how sad it is that mankind is given this death sentence right, uh, for their sins. They, are, they would die slowly, as it were, surely. Uh, you would notice in uh, Genesis chapter 5, it is a diary of death. A uh, picture of gene genealogy in a cemetery. One generation after another. But here, the Lord wants us to see that... <clears throat> All hope is not gone. All hope is not forlorn. But God intervened in the tragedy of Adam and Eve. Their family was restored when God gave to Adam and Eve another son. The name, by the name of Seth, we have three thoughts for us. Uh, to consider from our text a new birth, spiritual rebirth. That's the first thought in verse 24 of Genesis chapter 4. And a new beginning, verse 26 or verse 25 and verse 26 here. Uh, verse 26, a new beginning, spiritual beginning. In verse 26 of Genesis chapter 4. And a new generation, a generation, a spiritual generation that would come forth from the loins of Seth, the son that God would give to Adam and Eve. And so here we would consider first the new birth or the spiritual rebirth. God began to enable by His grace for Adam and Eve to have another child. Did Adam and Eve uh, not conceive again after Cain and Abel, <clears throat> or Cain was uh, banished and Abel died? Well, we believe that there are many more children that God gave to Adam and Eve because God promised that He would cause them to procreate, proliferate, uh, bless them with uh, procreation. But here we are speaking about the line of the godly seed, the man and woman who love God, whose uh, spiritual eyes are open, who behold and receive the blessing of God. This is the generation 
of God's people from which the church has its uh, foundation. You see here through Seth and the son Enos that would come, uh, God set for them a new beginning. And so verse 25 says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slain. Well, the name Seth means compensation. The word there means appointed, uh, appointed or set. That's the root verb for the name Seth. Because <clears throat> God would, by his seed, allow godliness to continue continue to the end time and from him the Messiah should descend. So on the one hand, you see wickedness proliferating greatly so that by the tenth generation when Noah would come in Genesis chapter 6, God was ready to judge the world with a global flood. In other words, there was such a great proliferation of evil that corruption is such a great uh, uh, poison that seeks to taint uh, man with great uh, weakness. And here we realize how important it is that men know their maker. As Matthew Henry would put it, man is not his own maker. Therefore, he must not be his own master, but the author of his being must be the director of his motions and the centre of them. And so, when God made Adam and Eve and God made men, God made them in His likeness, righteous, holy, and therefore happy. When we are connected to God, when God is with us, there is great blessing. And so, uh, Genesis chapter 4 and verse uh, 20. <clears throat> 20, or Genesis chapter 5 and verse 2 says, After God created man, He blessed them. He blessed them. He blessed them with His presence upon them. He blessed them by His care upon them. And here we see how God appointed for Adam and Eve another son, the name of Seth, for he will begin a line of men from which the Messiah would come. A line of men who would live a godly life, a life connected with their Creator. And here in Genesis chapter 4 uh, is described for us this man, this man, Seth, uh, how he would uh, bear an important uh, role uh, in which he, through his descendants, uh, they would be God-fearers. They would be men and women who would serve the living and true God. And so our text tells us that for, in verse 25 of Genesis chapter 4, for God, said Eve, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, 
Abel was the son who loved God and understood how to approach God. He brought a, a lamb or a, and a meat sacrifice, a sacrifice of a, a, a flesh to God and how that was accepted of God. And, uh, but here we, we notice or we saw how he also died. He died because Cain, the brother, killed him. Cain's offering was not accepted of God. His offering was not uh, acceptable because it was not according to God's stipulations. And so when Abel died, the family plunged into great uh, quietness. Right? Uh, but here in verse 26, it is told to us that with the birth of Seth and the birth of Seth's son, Enos, that men began to call upon the name of the Lord. In other words, there was a revival of the faith, the revival of religion, revival of fellowship with God, whereas the generation of men and women uh, with Cain and many others uh, adopted a different lifestyle, sin, uh, depravity, uh, dominate and contaminate their lives. And so we are thankful to God to notice that God intervened and God allowed uh, Adam and Eve to uh, bring forth this son who is a man who would love God and is a man who would serve God. He is a man who is spiritually uh, alive as <clears throat> John uh, would put it when uh, Jesus met with this man by the name of Nicodemus. Uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless a man would receive the way to God according to God's stipulations, which Adam and Eve knew when God gave the solution in Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. The woman's seed, the seed that would come from Eve, <coughs> whom God would have appointed through Seth, would be the uh, progenitor of uh, the cries that would come and he would be the one by which sins could be atoned for. Uh, you notice how when Adam and Eve sinned, God provided for them the clothing of animal skin to cover their sin, their shame and to alleviate their fear as a result of their sin. They are falling away from God. And so here it is uh, described for us uh, the, <coughs> the, the need that men would be born again. Born again uh, through the message of the good news of the gospel. And this is what we are doing. We are sharing this good news that in a world that is so frightened uh, by this pandemic, uh, 
that there is a way out of this death trap, that there is a way out through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Death is defeated. Sin is defeated. And here it is given to us this hope of this, through this new, new birth <coughs> that we indeed, sinful men, must be born again, born again into the kingdom of God, <clears throat> born in the spirit. And so here, our first thought provides for us this message of the new birth, this son that God would appoint for Adam and Eve. Uh, he would be the son <clears throat> that God would appoint to begin this line of men who love God, who serve God, from which the Messiah would come from. If you read, if you were to uh, read in <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, you'd be able to see uh, this line of godly men that is described in uh, Genesis chapter 5 and summarized here in just a few verses. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Canaan, Mahalalil, Jared, Kinnok, <clears throat> Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You, you would see here, this is the line of blessing, the line by which uh, God would rebuild the family of Adam and Eve, uh, plagued, uh, with, uh, plagued with the disease of sin. And so you see this, <coughs> how worship was restored with the birth of a, of a son. And this son would prove to be a godly man. And he would, uh, out of all the children, uh, have a son by the name of Enos who would love God. And it is from there that the faith is passed on from one generation to another generation. And so this was the, the beginning, the new birth, the spiritual rebirth, how important it is when families, uh, in families, that God would, by His grace, uh, enable the family to worship together. Because father, mother, children, they would all love the Lord. They would all sing the praise of God. They would all seek to walk with God. And indeed, this is a great blessing of God. And God blessed Adam and Eve with this uh, child f to their comfort. And this is what uh, Eve is saying here in Genesis 4 verse uh, 25. For God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, a child who would love God. And therefore, this was a new beginning <clears throat> for them, verse 26. And to Seth and to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. The name Enos means frailty. It was a name that uh, means weakness, misery, a description of man's estate. But when men began to call upon God again, that was the beginning of the alleviation of their misery. When the Spirit of God would come upon them, when the wisdom of God would instruct them, 
instruct them to love God, instruct them to live the godly life. And here the Lord seeks for us to see that He did not leave men without help, without hope. But when He made a covenant to Adam and Eve that a seed would come through their loins that would defeat Satan and the devil and its ploy to debunk and derail mankind. We see here the glimmer of hope when men would choose to call upon the name of the Lord. This was the greatest uh, blessing that came to Adam and Eve and their life after the fall. You remember before the fall, they were enjoying the presence of God with them. But after the fall, after the fall, they became fearful and God came to them again to restore them. Restore them by giving them the coats of skin, uh, 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 a picture of the Christ that would come in the future, the Son of God, the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. And so here begins a new, <coughs> uh, a new start for this family. And the beginning of this, the new start for this family begin with this child who loves God, whom they are able to teach the things of God uh, and who they are able to uh, uh, <clears throat> inculcate the uh, love of God in their heart. As the proverb says, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Men began to worship God. Adam and Eve did not just worship God alone, uh, themselves. But here what is described in verse 26 is this, that the families began to emerge who love God, who serve God, and who gather to worship God in public and solemn assemblies. Just like in the churches that we have here in the New Testament, the men of God whom God by His mercy opened our spiritual eyes and we have a new beginning in our life, a new connection and the old things are passed away. The kind of music that we hear in the past, well, we would discard them and we would choose to uh, hear the songs of Zion, the praise of God, how we just lose the appetite for the things of the world. And there is a great desire, there's a great um, uh, thirst and hunger for righteousness, for the things of God. This is a picture of a new birth. When uh, with the new birth comes the new beginning and our life begin to change, we begin to uh, love to read the Word of God. We begin to love the, the Bible and how important uh, the Word of God uh, is to us. And so when God gave Seth and then Enos, you would notice that this family, these new families that were established, they were in close contact, close touch with Adam and Eve who would have taught them, would have showed them, would have uh, passed down to them the way by which God is to be approached, the, the way by which God is to be worshipped. 
Uh, you see that there is a group of men led by Cain, uh, those who have deserted God, uh, those who uh, have gone to build a city for themselves and to declare themselves anti-God. Uh, they, they would uh, atheist, agnostics, <clears throat> and they call themselves the sons of men. But God also began through the line of Seth, uh, 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 where men began to declare him, men began to worship him, men began to call themselves the sons of God, that they belong to the living and true God. And God is their maker, <coughs> and Adam and Eve must have that opportunity to teach their, uh, this family whom God has opened their eyes so that they would love God, they would go and serve God and they would uh, walk with God. How comforted Adam and Eve must, must have been when God uh, caused uh, reformation and revival uh, to come to this family that was struck with the tragedy that has took place as a result of their own folly, uh, their own sin. Uh, their sin uh, had and their <coughs> has given, uh, or they, their folly had given sin and death entrance into the world. Suddenly, life in the world, in the created world of God, would be different. Death would come. Thorns and thistles uh, would uh, compete. And man has to labour hard to live. But God provided for man the way out. And we thank the Lord that He has opened our spiritual eyes so that we could know Him. And after we know Him, uh, we have that burden for the families or the, for the members of our family who are still uh, outside the Kingdom of God. How we would uh, seek to pray for them that God would be merciful to open their spiritual eyes. And salvation indeed is of the Lord. And as we plead, as we uh, seek the Lord for mercy, we wait upon Him. As we, by the grace of God, uh, uh, hope that our loved ones may be won over to the Lord, so that they would experience in their, uh, <clears throat> in their death, uh, the opening of, of the way to heaven, that they would live with e hope and eternal life as we have, that, that we know God has bestowed upon us through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, uh, you would see here that there is a new beginning. When God gave the new birth, He also gave the strength for us to worship Him. After we are born again, uh, we seek to read the Word of God and also we seek to congregate with the people of God. We seek to uh, learn of the things of God and you realise that there is a, a great... Uh, uh, desire, longing to worship, to worship God. And we thank the Lord that we could be gathered for, gathered for worship. Where does that desire come from? The desire to worship God? Well, it comes from God. Only God could give that holy desire in our hearts. When our sins are washed away, 
by the blood of the Lamb. And so uh, here in verse 26 is described for us uh, how uh, men began to organize themselves to worship God. And Adam and Eve uh, must have been the leader. Uh, you would notice uh, in chapter 5 uh, is a list of the descendants of those of Adam and Eve who love God. And you would notice that uh, if you would make a calculation of the years uh, uh, of the <clears throat> patriarchs that lived the, during those times, you would notice that uh, all the patriarchs uh, except Noah were born before Adam died. So that <coughs> from him, they might receive the knowledge of the uh, truth concerning the worship of God right, that they would know concerning the creation, concerning the paradise in Eden that God has created, concerning the fall, and concerning the promise of the Messiah, the way back, and concerning the way of worship, the religious life, the way by which man could uh, approach God. And so you see here, as uh, <coughs> uh, Matthew Henry would uh, uh, put it, how the Lord uh, provided uh, for himself a people. So great, he says, was the care of Almighty God to preserve, to preserve in posterity or in his church, the knowledge of his will and the purity of his worship. Right? We thank the Lord that our forefathers has passed the faith, passed the faith to us, and that we have received this faith, this order of worship, how we can approach the living and true God as He has stipulated for us in His Word. This is such a great privilege. And God would uh, want us to uh, make full use of what He has bestowed upon us uh, to receive indeed from Him <coughs> His blessings. As the psalmist says in Psalm 127 and verse uh, 1 to 2, Except the Lord build the house, his, they labour in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Life without God, the life of Cain and his descendants. You may build the greatest empire here on earth, but you are going to be disappointed. As what Solomon would uh, describe to us in the book of Ecclesiastes, he tells us he has tried it all. He enjoyed all the pleasure, all the entertainment. He has enjoyed all of the, well, bestowed with great resources to live this life. And, and he came to a conclusion. He says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. There is nothing new under the sun. And if we would not have our spiritual eyes open. We would not uh, look for a city whose maker and builder is God. We would not, and we would uh, choose to uh, build a foundation upon this world. We will be disappointed. And you would see today the scenario that is before us. How the world is grinding to a halt because of a 
a little uh, microscopic uh, virus, all that men would accumulate for themselves, all that men would do is as if, you know, uh, there is nothing that could stop men from living this life forever and ever and enjoying this life. But suddenly, everything is brought to a halt. And isn't it a good time for the people of God to be awakened, to think about life, to help us to uh, be, uh, in a sense, uh, given, given time to evaluate life, to help us to uh, orientate concerning our purpose for life and what are those things that we would see that would concern us. Well, what is it that God has placed in our hearts? Solomon says that God has placed eternity in our hearts. God has placed the understanding of a, the, a better life, life with God. And as we evaluate and think about uh, this world and what is happening around us, it must cause us to be awakened, to see the futility of life without God the futility of building uh, uh, something of a material uh, uh, possession in this life. Right? You notice that suddenly uh, all of this vaporize, Some, all of this become not so important. Right? Imagine a person falling sick and a person <clears throat> having his health taken away. What is it that you look for? Uh, all your possessions that you have uh, will not satisfy you if you are unable even to uh, taste the food that is the good food that may be placed before you. And so as we think about life, we think about eternal life. We think about what God has <clears throat> made uh, to be the blessing upon His people. And so as we think about the posterity of Adam and Eve, how God began a new life, uh, began a new generation of men and women <clears throat> that would love God, that would serve God, that would worship God, uh, we thank the Lord that He has raised His church today to be His witnesses. Men and women with a spiritual rebirth who has a new beginning. Our affections are not on earth, but our affections are upon heaven. And that we, we are willing to... Uh, to do the things that would bring eternal reward for our souls. We have understood the, the wherewither of the meaning of life, as Solomon would uh, put it at the conclusion of the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 12 and verses uh, 13 to 14. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole of man. This is what God requires of man. This is the whole of man, the whole duty of man. You see the word duty is put in the italics. Right? Here Solomon is saying that, that we are to fear God, fear the God, the living and true God the creator of heaven and earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing 
<coughs> whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Lord <coughs> shows us how we ought to live our lives. We ought to love the worship of God. <coughs> we ought to love the name of God. We ought to love the day of God. We ought to love the <coughs> representative of God. We ought to love the body of men. We ought to love the morality of men. We ought to love the property of men. Uh, we learn uh, to, by His grace, by the grace of God, to love, the, have the strength to obey His word, to love His laws. And this is how uh, human society were prosper. <coughs> this is how uh, human society would receive the blessing of God. As Solomon puts it, righteousness exhorteth a nation. The good laws of God in which a nation would follow, would practice, would bring order and, uh, and peace to the nation. Well, we thank the Lord that He has granted us understanding through of the faith through His Word, whom He has kept pure through the ages. We have the Word of God with us, and the Word of God is the, the <clears throat> bulwark by which we would learn how to worship Him, how to serve Him, how to live this happy life and to be ushered into a happier life in eternity with God. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ is returning soon and He has said before He was ascended to heaven that He would go and prepare a mansion for us and that He would come and receive us and we will receive that heavenly inheritance, the heavenly inheritance that <clears throat> is incorruptible, that is undefiled, and that fadeth not away. And it's reserved in heaven for us. We look forward to that inheritance. We realize that this fallen world is ready for judgment. And God's judgment comes can come very swiftly. As we study the book of Revelation, uh, we would see uh, how this world, uh, God would deal with those who dwell upon earth. In other words, those who do not know God, those who do not serve God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming again as judge. He comes as a roaring lion, whereas in His first coming, He comes as, a, as the Lamb of God who would die, who has died for the sins of the world. And we who have received Him, received the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts, He has given us the grace to proclaim and provide a way out through the gospel for sinful men. And so, Lord, we thank God so we thank the Lord for strengthening us to grant us uh, His peace and that His joy. This I, so let us uh, take heart and the Lord may strengthen us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy holy word. We thank Thee how worship can be restored when men would draw nigh to God again by a spiritual rebirth. In a new birth, in the new family, Seth, that was given to Adam and Eve. New beginning, where men would call upon God. And a new generation of men and women who would, uh, God would preserve uh, to, with a faith. O oh Lord, indeed, Thou hast spoken that 
there is a straight gate that leads to a narrow way and the end of it is everlasting life. But there is a, a <clears throat> wide gate and a broad way, the way of Cain, that leads to everlasting destruction, judgment in hellfire. O oh Lord, help, uh, help us to choose well, that we may choose to the Lord, to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to come to Him and to repent of our sins and to receive forgiveness for our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen Thy people, O Lord, and grant us the grace to continue to worship Thee and find strength for life daily. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.